What up players, it's Wolfbots to up in this mud. Today I've got a product review of the Ogre Kingdom's Battalion. And unfortunately it's not the new battalion which is full of just big brutish ogres. I've actually got a hold of the old battalion for really really cheap. Um, this was back in the days when, um, you know, back in 7th edition, right when 7th was going into 8th. Uh, oh, stuff hasn't been done for ogres in a long time. The uh, There were pretty unpopular in my gaming area. I was able to get a copy of the, or a hold of the battalion box um, for for really cheap. So I, it's just been kind of sitting around uh, collecting dust. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to unbox it. It doesn't have all these ogres. It actually has uh, some knoblars, less ogres, and a unit of knoblars in it. So um, I'm just showing you that this is the new ogre paint scheme because back in the day, I'll show you a cover of the ogre box of the battalion, but they they didn't have this humanoid, flesh-colored uh, skin tone. These kind of look like they're painted to resemble um, the skin tone, at least ogrins in 40k, which are just which were a race of um, subhumans, demi-humans um, that are just like giant, bulked-out humanoids. So they have the same skin color. In Warhammer, originally the ogres, for those of you who don't know, had more of a really gray uh, skin tone, skin coloring to help differentiate them from humans. Um, so people wouldn't get confused that, oh yeah, we're just making giant humans. We're painting them as humanoid colors though, um, but their rules are completely different. They're cannibals and they're completely not humanoid at all. I guess they wanted to paint their skin tones to reflect that. But anyways, I, I like this new skin tone. I like the warmer, more humanoid, pinkish uh, look to the, to the skin. I think it, um, it makes them pop, it makes them brighter on the battlefield. I've got my two fine cast ogre uh, lords or heroes, the slaughter master here on the left that's about to club this poor little knoblar in the head and eat him. And ooh, look at that blood and gore. And then I've got our ogre uh, man eater pirate guy on the right with his anchor weapon. Sure. And his treasure. Look at his treasure. So, uh,. I guess with this battalion, my goal is to would be just to paint them in the same kind of warm skin tones. And I, I've noticed the blood just shows up a lot better too. Look at that, ooh, gross. Blood and gore. Um, oops, and he fell down. Thank goodness it's fine, Cast. With all the miscasts and stuff, he's not gonna snap apart when, oops, when they fall off of my little ghetto display tray. See, they're so big, they don't, they don't, they can't stick up on their own little display case. But um, for those of you who didn't see my tutorial, my favorite part of this is the little knoblar parrot on the guy's shoulder. No, I don't want to be a parrot. Why do I have to be a parrot? No, I don't like this. Um, yeah, I still didn't get to the mermaid tattoo on his on his gut, but um, maybe doing this will help motivate me. I'm scared. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So, like I said, these guys are fine cast. The battalion is all in plastic. So let's take a look at some of the screws. So, the main core of the ogre army are these big ogres, and um, you've got seven of these giant sprues, and with two ogre bodies on each one, that means that you've got 14 ogre bodies in total. Now, the interesting thing that Games Workshop did with these was that they made extra frames for the um, iron bulls, or iron guts, I'm sorry, the iron guts and the um, lead belchers, which are the cannon toting guys. Um, but they, in order to, um, I guess, I don't know if they weren't cutting costs or whatever, they included the regular ogre bull frame for all of those. So if you buy um, a box set of lead belchers, you get what's already on the ogre bull frame, which is what I'm showing you right now. And then you just get like a separate sprue with all of the cannon arms and bits on it. So I'm going to show you what was known as the ogre bulls back in the day. Uh, right now I think they're just called regular ogres. Um, and then we'll show you the sprues for the specialty bits, for, for the specialty troops. So you get these bodies, and as you can see, they're big hulking bodies. The holes on the front of them are for what are known as gut plates, which are big, giant, um, round plates of bronze or silver that they strap onto their bellies to protect them, because in ogre culture, the belly is really sacred, and um, that's why they eat a lot, so that they can grow their power 
and um, they protect it with these gut plates. So you've got these knives, you've got knoblar heads, this gut plate here, the arms, here are the shoes, or the bottoms of the boots that you're going to be putting on the bottoms of the models. Feet, it's like a little ponytail braid, it's the standard arm, and here are some close combat weapons, really big ones. Then going to the other side of the sprue, let's turn this around so you can see it a little bit better. We've got two knoblar bodies, and these you could either decorate the base with or um, put on their own separate bases and just throw them into your knoblar unit for extra bodies, which is what I probably would do, save money, you know. Ogre heads, and here are the um, fists with the like little gauntlets and knives on them. They have their own special punching rule, or um, to use as like a shield, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, here's a command uh, frame that you get with the ogres, regular ogres infantry. So as you can see, it's got a banner. And as well as, um, I think this might be a, is this the part for the crow's nest at the top for the little Noblar, lookout Noblar. Gut plate, banner top, whole bunch of um, heads, ogre heads. So let's turn it over and take a look. So the original ogre head sculpts I think are really cool, really detailed. I like this guy with the skulls wrapped in his, in his beard and mustache. And you've also got little knoblar stuck in a bag that you can put to, on the guy's belt, some bone totems decorations, a s hook of meat, um, this is the arm for the bellower to put it up to his mouth like he's screaming out, uh, the lookout knoblar to put in the little crow's nest, I think, it's a little bear trap hand, and some more hand weapons. Okay, hey, next we're going to take a look at the Iron Guts frame. So along, if, if you buy an Iron Guts box, I think you get the, the regular Ogre Bull Sprue along with these, uh, this frame. So Iron Guts have double-handed weapons, so they've got these really mean, wicked-looking weapons. Here's the uh, standard top. Shows like the Great Maw with some skulls and stuff inside. Really gross, really disgusting. You've got the arms holding the great weapons, and the heads. So, um, these are more armored. I like this one with the chainmail over the over the face. Got like helmets and stuff. They're more well, better protected. Really interesting. And their gut plates too are like here. You see like cavalry shields, Bretonian knight shields, Noblar heads. Um, Here's a little bear trap, some hooks, chains, where are these? More gut plates. This one's got like a lizardman scales on it, I think that's really cool. Here's another gut plate. And you got four more gut plates over here, so a lot of variety, a lot of extra bits you'll end up with. And here are two knoblars. I think, I don't have the old Ogre Kingdoms book, but I think they are supposed to have had um, different Noblars besides just the Lookout Noblar. Like ones that were holding weapons and kind of went along with the, the Iron Guts. I don't know, that I could totally be wrong. Um, not sure what this is. This metal disc here. Anyone know what this is? Hmm, interesting. Next we'll take a look at the lead belcher frame and then we'll wrap up with the knoblars. So the lead belchers have these giant cannons that they just kind of walk forward with and they just, sh you know, shoot all the scrap inside out. I love this one, has a little knoblar ready to light the fuse. It's going to be a lot of fun. So a lot of great detail. They just put a lot of scrap into their 
cannons, like all these spears and axes and weapons and stuff. Really interesting. You've got a horn, you've got kegs of gunpowder that you could put on the ogre. Um, some more sacks with weapons to hang on their belts. And here are their heads and faces. Here's some ammo uh, knoblars. There's one with the fuse. Really interesting how they, they play with the the matchstick motif. Like this guy here's got like a little lit match hanging out of his head. Um, this one's got a lit torch ready to light the fuse. So really awesome. They're gonna be really fun to paint to soot and dirty up the ends of the cannon as well as uh, maybe the hands where there's some singe marks or burn marks. So looking forward to painting these guys. So um, I'm gonna cut away now and then we'll show you the Noblar uh, sprue in the next part of this video. Alright, so here's the last part of this video where I've got the sprue with the Noblars on it. For those of you ogre, uh, orcs and goblins players out there, you'll notice that unlike the goblins where you have to put you have to glue their torsos to their legs, the arms to the torsos, and the heads to the arm uh, to the bodies. These come pretty much all done except for the heads. So they're a lot like the Warhammer 40k Gretchen, where you've got the body basically all finished, and all you need to do is pick the different heads for each guy. So I I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, is it is it better that they did it like this, or is the older sculpts of the little goblin um, figures that you have to each piece together does it give you do you feel like you have more flexibility and uh, are able to better put it together or do you feel like the savings on time is is worth it personally I, I think that for, for these guys it's great um, for these knoblogs it's great they're able to pack 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 on the sprue, this sprue along with all the heads and this guy actually <laughs> looks like it, it's two guys one on top of the other so I wonder if you can put that on a cavalry base and count it as two guys I don't know have you tried doing that any of you ogre kingdoms players out there so the faces look great I think you're gonna be able to really get to see a, a good get a good feel for them once they're painted up and not just this dull gray plastic but um, the the sculpts for these guys look good even though they're kind of old and um, can't wait to put them together like this guy's got a little handkerchief tied around his head yeah really cool really cool a lot more variety and difference than the um, goblins the regular standard goblins for the orc and goblin range okay so here's the this uh, this is the last brew all the other frames we went through so um, that's what you get in the ogre battalion or the old one you get a um, bunch of knoblars, some lead belchers, some iron guts, and some uh, regular ogre infantry. But it's not like you get less ogre infantry than the new Games Workshop Battalion box, which is what you see here. So, um, thanks for watching. And uh, my plan for, for this old battalion box is to build them up, show you guys what they look like all on the table, and then um, see how far I can get into painting them. So, stay tuned for that.